Hello, my name is Dr. Susan Willman. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist at the Reproductive Science Center. I'm here today to talk to you about something very important to us at RSC, preconception genetic screening. What is preconception genetic screening? It is the genetic testing of parents before a pregnancy occurs. Did you know that 2% of infants are born with a genetic disease? Certain diseases are caused by passing abnormal genes from one generation to another. Some genetic diseases can be anticipated by testing parents first. This video presentation is about what genetic diseases would be important to test in you before you have a baby. Maybe you're wondering why test now? You are here at RSC and our goal is to help you have a baby. We are confident you can achieve that goal. We want you not only to have a family, but to have a healthy family. Preconception genetic testing can be one step towards that goal. With DNA testing of blood or saliva, testing can identify individuals who are at increased risk of having children born with a genetic disease. Some identifying risk factors that help to decide what genetic diseases to test for include your ethnic background, your family history, and your personal medical history. Genetic disease is caused by changes, the scientific term is mutation, in the DNA sequence of a gene. The genetic code is the specific order of DNA molecules for a specific gene. If a single DNA molecule within that gene is altered and the change is significant, that change can result in a disease. The strands of DNA reside in chromosomes. The chromosomes are the structures that contain the genes and are the vehicle for passing genes on to each new generation. Every cell in each individual has 46 chromosomes, which are comprised of 23 pairs. Each set of 23 chromosomes is inherited from each parent, one set from the mother, one set from the father. So, you have two sets of the same gene, one from each parent, and you pass one set of each gene on to your offspring. The reason to test now is that if you know in advance that you are at risk of having a child with a genetic disease, you have two medical interventions available to you. One is testing of the fetus during pregnancy, the other is in vitro fertilization with genetic testing of embryos. Testing during pregnancy can be done in the first or second trimester. Chorionic villus sampling is a procedure performed at 10 to 12 weeks into the pregnancy. A needle or catheter is passed into the placenta and placental cells are analyzed for the genetic disease. Amniocentesis is performed at 14 to 16 weeks. Similarly, a needle is passed into the pregnancy sac and amniotic fluid is aspirated and analyzed. If the fetus is determined to have a genetic disease, the patient then decides whether or not to terminate the pregnancy. With in vitro fertilization, embryos are tested in the laboratory. First, eggs are fertilized with sperm, creating embryos. One or two cells are removed from the embryos and analyzed for the abnormal gene. The normal embryos are then transferred back to the woman's uterus. By transferring normal embryos, the chance of having a child with a problem is reduced. Most couples who discover that they might be at risk for having a child born with a genetic disease prefer to prevent the pregnancy by relying on IVF rather than face termination of a pregnancy. Genetic testing can only be done if it is known in advance that there is a problem. So what kind of tests can we do? There are basically three types of genetic diseases that we're concerned about. One is called a recessive disease. With a recessive genetic disease, there are two copies of an abnormal gene that are present in an individual who has the disease. If an individual has one copy of the gene, that person is perfectly normal. But if two parents both have one copy of the gene, 
they can pass on that abnormal copy to their children and 25% of their offspring would inherit both those abnormal genes and then have the disease. Most of the time with recessive genetic disease, there is no family history. So here's a diagram of the inheritance pattern of an autosomal recessive disease. The father has one normal gene, which is the dark blue and the big R, and one abnormal gene, which is the white shaded area and the small r. The mother is the same. They are normal. They're gonna pass on one copy of their gene to each offspring. 25% of their children will get both normal genes from each parent. They will be normal. They will never have to worry about passing on that gene to their children. 50% of the children will get one copy of the abnormal gene and one copy of the normal gene. They will be carriers, just like their parents. They will be normal. However, 25% of the children will get both copies of the abnormal gene, and they will be born with a disease. Examples of autosomal recessive diseases are cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, alpha and beta thalassemia, which are types of anemia, Tay-Sachs disease, and spinal muscular atrophy. Remember, often there is no family history of these problems. What else can be tested? Something called dominant disease. So a dominant genetic disease means the disease presents when there's only one copy of that abnormal gene. If the individual has the disease, then half of their children will inherit the disease. Most of the time, there is a family history. Typically, the adult knows that a parent has it and that they may have it themselves. Here is a diagram of the inheritance pattern of an autosomal dominant disease. The affected individual is the mother. Half of her children, which you hear one daughter and one son, will get the disease. The third type of genetic disease is an X-linked recessive disease. X-linked means that the gene is linked or located on the X chromosome. Only males are affected. Only males have the disease. The mother may be normal, not know she has a problem, but have a child who's a son with a disease. Here's a diagram of the inheritance pattern with X-linked recessive diseases. The mother has two X chromosomes. The XD is the affected gene. One of her daughters will get the normal gene. Another daughter may get the affected gene. She's a carrier, but she's normal. However, if a son gets the affected X gene, he will have the disease. Examples of X-linked recessive diseases are Fragile X syndrome and Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Fragile X syndrome is the second most common cause of mental retardation after Down syndrome. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a neuromuscular wasting disease. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, I have no family history of problems. Why do I need to do any tests? Well, remember, the recessive genetic disease may not have a family history. X-linked diseases, the mother may be fine. If there's no family or personal medical history that indicates a risk for genetic disease, then you still may be at risk. Usually in this situation, testing is recommended based on your ethnicity. Different genetic diseases occur with differing frequency in different ethnic groups. So genetic testing for specific diseases is influenced by your ethnicity. For example, let's look at this table. Cystic fibrosis. This is a disease that affects almost all ethnic groups, but is more frequent in Europeans, Caucasians, and the Ashkenazi Jewish population. Tay-Sachs disease is most prevalent in Ashkenazi Jewish and French Canadian. Beta thalassemia, a type of anemia, is more common in the Mediterranean, Pakistani, or African communities. Alpha thalassemia, more common in Southwest Asian or African. Sickle cell anemia. Everybody knows about African American risk, 
but probably you didn't know that Mediterranean background, Middle Eastern, Caribbean, Latin American, or Indian are also at risk of sickle cell disease. Other illnesses like Canavans, Gauchets, Familia dysautonomia, and many others are associated with Ashkenazi Jewish population. And spinal muscular atrophy is common in all groups. Well, what is cystic fibrosis? One in 25 Caucasians carries the gene, about one in 40 to one in 90 for other ethnic groups. Each year, 30,000 Americans are born with cystic fibrosis. It is a chronic lung disease. It also has pancreatic cysts, and it results in early death. Anemias. So the basic anemias we focused on are sickle cell, alpha thalassemia, and beta thalassemia. All these anemias are related to having an abnormal hemoglobin molecule. That's the molecule in the red blood cell that carries oxygen. If you don't have a normal hemoglobin, then your body can't get adequate oxygen. Individuals born with severe anemia require lifelong treatment, including transfusions, and face early death. Tay-Sachs affects one in 30 Ashkenazi Jewish individuals. This is a disease where the nerve and brain cells are affected and they die off early. Infants typically do not live longer than six months. Spinal muscular atrophy, about one in 6,000 babies are born each year in the United States with spinal muscular atrophy. This is a disease characterized by weakness in the nerves and the muscles and it's progressive. It affects the ability to walk, to swallow, to breathe, and results in early death. So genetic screening is based on ethnic group. If you have an ethnic group that is one-fourth or more in your background, you should be tested for that disease related to that ethnic group. For example, if you have a grandparent who is Jewish, you should consider testing for those genetic diseases common in the Jewish population. If you have one parent who is Caucasian and one is Asian, you should consider testing for both ethnic groups. Here is a table of the different genetic tests recommended by two professional organizations. One is the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the other is the American College of Medical Geneticists. You can see in the middle column, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommends cystic fibrosis testing for all, sickle cell anemia, beta thalassemia, and alpha thalassemia testing for those at increased risk based on their ethnic group, and three tests specific to the Jewish population, Tay-Sachs, Canavans, and familial dysautonomia. The American College of Medical Geneticists recommends more testing. They recommend that the Jewish population also be tested for Gaucher's, Bloom syndrome, mucolipidosis type 4, and Neiman-Pick disease type A. The ACMG also recommends that everybody be tested for spinal muscular atrophy. So, knowing about these different genetic diseases, we would like to give you some options about genetic counseling and testing. There are three options we'd like to present to you. One is to see a genetic counselor. Two, get the basic genetic testing through your insurance approved laboratory of tests based on your ethnic group or counsel testing. I'll explain that in a minute. Choice one, genetic counselor. A genetic counselor is a professional trained in genetic diseases. Now the RSC physicians are not specialists in genetic diseases, but we can refer you to see one. A genetic counselor may recommend additional tests based on your family history. Choice two, basic testing. This is testing based on your ethnic background. You can get the basic genetic testing through your insurance approved laboratory of the test based on your ethnic background. For example, cystic fibrosis screening is recommended for everybody. Thalassemia testing is recommended for non-Caucasians. Jewish panel testing is recommended for those with Jewish ancestry. Choice three, council testing using the RSC panel. 
Now, Council is a new company. It's specializing in genetic diseases, and here's their website if you'd like to look it up. RSC has worked with Council to tailor a panel of tests. The panel of tests would depend on your ethnic background and could include cystic fibrosis, beta thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, spinal muscular atrophy, autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease, Tay-Sachs, and 10 other Jewish recessive diseases. As part of becoming an RSC patient, we are going to ask you to sign a preconceptual consent form. It's a consent form that acknowledges you understand the information presented in this video presentation. We physicians at RSC do recommend that you consider genetic screening. RSC has worked with Council to develop a panel of the most common genetic diseases that might be of concern. It is the most inclusive test. So make a good choice. Now is the right time to take the steps necessary to ensure that you have a healthy baby. Thank you for considering Reproductive Science Center. I'm Sheldon Josephs, the Executive Director. Now that you've heard Dr. Wilman's presentation, let me remind you that you must complete the preconceptual consent form before any treatment services can begin. You probably have financial questions about the three options for genetic testing mentioned by Dr. Wilman. Each of our offices has a dedicated financial counselor who can assist you and answer your questions about any of the three options. The first option mentioned was meeting with a genetic counselor. Your doctor will be pleased to refer you to one. The current cost in the community for an initial consultation is about $175. The second option is to have the necessary lab testing performed by an outside laboratory of your choice. You may wish to seek this option if you have insurance that covers genetic testing. Fees will vary by lab, the test ordered, and whether your insurance provides coverage. The third option is the RSC Council test. If you select this convenient option, we will provide you with a test kit that you mail to the council lab. You will be instructed to register and order your test online. The current test fee is $350. When ordering online, you can pay directly or have the option of having the council lab contact your medical insurer for authorization prior to the test being performed. Fees quoted are current at the time this video is produced and are subject to change. Ask your financial counselor for the most current information. On behalf of everyone at Reproductive Science Center, we thank you for allowing us to assist you in growing your family.